Welcome to this week's edition of Trade the Trend, a weekly video discussing where the stock market is heading. This video is going to focus on the S&P 500. I'm going to cover the ASX 200 as well as gold and uranium in a separate video. I'll leave a link for that in the description section below. I'm also going to have a look at the NASDAQ and a few other US indices, so make sure you stick around for that. As always, this is general commentary. It doesn't take your personal situation into account. With all of that said, let's get into our first chart. So I've got the S&P 500 up on the screen and it's been, it's been a really big week, but it's also been an inconclusive week. So of course, the big news that we had out during the week was the, the US rate hike. And it's really interesting when you think about what's gone on in the last couple of weeks. So we've had a rate hike, we've had, had a couple of banks collapse, we've had a, a, a large bank having to be absorbed into, into UBS. But I think like if you knew this information in advance, you'd probably expect that the S&P 500 would currently be much lower, but it's not. It's still sitting above support. And if I put on some moving averages, you'll see, so I put on the 50 and the 100 day moving averages, you see it's still sitting around those moving averages. So look, it's quite an interesting situation. I think there are currently a lot of, lot of cross currents within this market as to how things are positioning. I'm going to go through some of them throughout this video. Uh, I think there's a real lack of consistency in the, the price action. And, and this makes this, um, this situation we have at the moment in the SP 500, I think it makes it particularly difficult to put all these pieces together and trying to work out where we're going. Let's, let's start by just having a quick look at, the, at an hourly chart just to really get some detail on what's been happening over the last, last couple of weeks. And as you can see on this, we've got this series of, of sharp declines. And this, continue, this has continued through over into, into the, the current week. Just look at the, the number of sharp declines that we've had. And on each of those declines, there's been an almost equally sharp snapback rally. So this is one of those times where where both sides really seem to be losing money. Those who are bearish in the market expecting a large sell-off, they're getting short on each breakdown and they're, a lot of them are getting stopped out on the ensuing rally. Same goes for the bulls. Those who are buying on the rally, a lot of them are getting stopped out on the decline. So it's a really seesawing, a really choppy market and it's a difficult market for, for most people to make money in. Now, just going back to the, the daily chart, and what we have here, so support is currently holding. This is around this 3,900 region, big technically active area going back many months. And, and that's been holding over the last few weeks just despite repeated attempts to get through it. That's not to say that's going to continue to hold, but so far that's very much the case. And we're sitting right on the moving averages at the moment, so we don't really have a great deal of of, uh, of insight from, from the averages in where this market is currently going. It really is uh, somewhat directionless at the moment. I think, um, I think this 3,800 level, beneath support remains a, a key level. Uh, a breakdown below there, that's where I think we could really start to see some follow through selling and that could set up a situation where the market does come back and retest this, um, this October low. But at the moment, that's not the case. We have a couple of layers of support or we need to contemplate the possibility of a retest of the October low. This is essentially a, a range bound market and, and range bound markets can be really difficult to trade. And the reason range bound markets are difficult to trade is that the price action is, is often quite erratic and it just lacks that consistency that you find when, when the market's trading within, a, within an upward trend. It just doesn't have that same consistency. It's more it uh, goes up, it comes back down, and, and just continues that, that pattern. And it's a difficult way for uh, to, to be buying stocks in that, sort of, uh, in that sort of environment. Now, one way to look at this range, and what I want to do, I'm just going to add some, some trend lines in. And just drew these earlier just to get the right shape on them. And I'm just going to put these trend lines on. And the different ways to look at this, this range. So one way is to look at this as a bit of a, um, a downward sloping range. So these are parallel lines. You can, you can do uh, a parallel lines when, when, look, this fits quite well. 
This is one way to construct this range. Another way would be to look at a more of a rectangular type range. So we could use uh, the low point from June, use uh, the recent high. We could even extend this back a, a few more months. And now, of course, there's a, there's a couple of overshoots. There's an overshoot in October. There's an overshoot in August. But what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to compress this into the tightest range that I can. And really, it's been hanging this range for around, around 10 to 11 months. So that's why, like now, as this has continued to develop, we can now see why it's been such a difficult trading period over the last, almost over the last last year since we've been doing all this, this back and forth. And now the thing is, we don't know how long this range is going to persist, and we don't know which way it's going to break from. But typically, a break from a trading range, the size of the one we currently have, typically leads to uh, a, a large move. It typically leads to a, also a long-lasting move, potentially a multi-month move, move which could run six to, to 12 months. We just don't know when that's going to occur. We're in this holding pattern and we're waiting, we're looking for signs, we're looking for clues to how it's going to break. And um, what worries me a little bit with, uh, with the way this, this is currently, currently playing out is when I look at an S&P 500 equal weighted um, ETF. So, of course, the S&P 500 capitalized weighted, so the larger stocks have the most influence, equal weighted, everything is weighted the, the same. When we look at this, it's quite a different structure than what we see on the S&P 500. Quite a bit of technical damage has been done over the last couple of weeks with this sharp move down we had with the, uh, the, the bank, bank breakdown, um, the regional banks in the US being sold aggressively. Um, this has really impacted the equal weight S&P 500. And we've also got these moving averages are now, now crossing. We're well below the moving averages. So that doesn't necessarily mean that this is going to uh, continue to break down, but it does bring it right back into the middle of the range. And again, you can see just like on the S&P 500, let's just draw in uh, a range. This is this broad trading range that we're, we're currently in, and we're now getting towards the lower end of the range, middle, middle to lower, lower end of the range. A lot of technical damage, and at best, I think it takes time for this to, this to, to, to stabilize and then start to, to, to ratchet higher. And because of that, this is why I think it's hard to see a lot of upside in the S&P 500 just at the moment with the with the, um, the equal weighted index just being weighed down so much. So it's... These are the cross currents that I talk about with the market and why it's such a difficult situation to try and um, navigate and, and manage a portfolio. Now, I'm going to look at the NASDAQ in a sec, but just first of all, if you're getting some value, please hit that like button. Please leave a short comment. Let's YouTube know that people are engaging with the video, which is so important for me because YouTube shows other people. And um, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. Now, let's quickly just jump over to the NASDAQ. So starting with the NASDAQ 100, it made a seven-month high last week. So despite all the, the negativity, despite all the, the, the talk of recessions and the market should be falling, the NASDAQ 100 has made a, a new high. Um, it's above the moving averages. Moving averages are trending higher. So again, when I talk about cross currents, this is another one. We can look at one indice and see, look, that doesn't look so great. That's looking negative. Then we look at something else, and you can clearly see a positive positive story to it. So cross currents, which create a very mixed picture, um, going across to the NASDAQ composite. Now the NASDAQ composite is more, much more broader based than the, the NASDAQ 100, which is quite a, quite a narrow grouping of stocks. This doesn't look as strong. So this is, this is for me, this is showing that the breadth within the market is, is worrying. It's like the, the S&P equal weight. It's, it's like we have a handful of, of mega caps which are largely underpinning the market. Uh, that said, I'll look at this and it does look, it still looks, still looks encouraging because I won't draw it there. I'm going to draw in um, a rounding basing pattern. If you just look at, look at this, you can clearly see that that rounding base formation in place. Now that's an encouraging sign when you see that. Also, positive moving averages above the moving averages doesn't guarantee it's going to stay like that. But at the moment that yeah, you know, it is supportive 
although it does look like those big caps are very much leading the way. Um, just quickly looking at Apple. Last week, Apple hit a, I think that's um, a, a seven-month high in Apple. So whilst the bears, like I, I saw a report this week, one um, a very prominent investor calling for a 50% crash. That may happen at some point in the future, um, in the months ahead even. But at the moment, it just doesn't look set up for the market to do that. It's hard to see a broad-based crash when you have a stock like Apple hitting seven months high so um look i think there's no crystal ball here lots of reason to be concerned but the price action isn't following the bearish bearish storyline present for me it's very much a case of i think we need to be be conservative with the way we approach this market and i think we also need to need to um have a decent weighting in cash for me i've got quite a high weighting in cash this picture is going to clear itself up. At the moment, it's it's very mixed. A lot of cross currents. It will become clearer as it becomes clearer. The positioning can can become more more assertive in on the long side. If we start getting those those long signals or continue to pull back, if the the bearish bearish case continues to or evolves more than it already has. So, I think just 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 play it safe, play it cool, be patient, and and let's ride through this period where things are far from certain so look hopefully that's been helpful thanks for joining me look forward to coming back and talk to you next week until then bye for now